So in today's tutorial, I'm going to use Inkscape version 91 to show you how to create um, an abbreviation sort of logo, uh, similar to what you see here on my screen. As you can see, I've used the letters A-L-E abbreviated to stand for abbreviated logo example for the sake of this tutorial. And the font I'll be using in this tutorial is called Geo Sans Light, and I've included a link to it in the description if you'd like to download that and install it. However, this technique will work with any font you'd like. I just think it looks best with this particular font. So, if and when you decide to install that font, install that font, go ahead and open up a new window, open up a new document, and then we can get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to File, Document Properties, and I'm going to uncheck this box up top, and then I'm going to close that out, and then come over here to this button that says Align and Distribute. We're going to click that to open up that menu and make sure you have last selected chosen from that menu. And then we'll go over here to, to where it says edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke. And click that button to open up that menu. And then we'll go to view. Make sure you have custom selected. And we'll go to zoom and we're going to zoom in one to one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here to our create and edit text objects tool. We're going to click on that. Come over here and click on the canvas to create a cursor. I'm just going to type in A-L-E for abbreviated logo example. And then I'm going to come up here to where it says uh, view and select font family, font size, and other text properties. I'm going to click that button. And I'm going to go find that font we just downloaded. Geo Sans Light. There it is. So once I have it selected, I'll click apply. And then close out of that menu. And we'll come up here to the arrow and click on that. And then while holding control on the keyboard, I'm going to click and drag one of these arrows. I'm going to enlarge this, make this about that big. And I'm going to come over here to where it says opacity and drop that in half. And then we'll go to path, object to path, and then ungroup. And we can actually, uh, we might have to bring the opacity down on that again. So let's go. OK, yeah. And then we can click off of that to deselect everything. And then we'll go to the Bezier pen over here. We'll click on that come up here to where it says snap custom nodes turn that button on and we're going to come over here and snap the cursor into this corner on the bottom of the A. We're going to click once and we're going to bring the cursor up to this corner up here and click again. And we're going to come up in the center here and click and then come down to this top corner over here and snap it onto there and then down here snap it onto there come down here into the middle and connect it back together at the starting point. And then we'll come over to the letter E and we'll come to this bottom corner right here and click on that. And then go up to this top corner and click on that. And we'll just come around the outside of this tail here and then connect it to the starting point, just like that. And then we can go back to our arrow. And while holding shift, click on the letter E so you have the shape and the letter E selected. And we'll go to path, difference. Now we can click on this shape right here and then hold shift in the keyboard and click on the letter A and we'll go to path difference. Then we can click and drag over this entire thing and go to path union. And the next thing we'll do is we'll come over here to the Bezier pen. We're going to click on this and we're going to come right outside. Actually, first, let's go up here and turn this off. The snap to custom nodes. Let's turn that back off. We don't need that anymore. So we're going to take our Bezier pen. We're going to come just outside of the uh, initials over here, but down here a little bit, a little bit wider. We're going to click once and then hold the control key and drag this line all the way out here to the other side, out to about there, and then click again. And you could let go of control and press enter on your keyboard. And that's going to create a nice straight line like that. Now let's come over here to the magnifying glass and click on that. And let's click and drag over this line to zoom in a little bit. And we're going to come up here to where it says edit paths by nodes and click on that. And then we're going to click and drag this line up to just about there. Something like that. And then we can come over here and click on this node over on the right and it's going to bring up these handles. And we're actually going to click and drag these handles to give this more of a curved shape, this line. We want this line dipping down and then coming back up and then dipping down. So I'm going to achieve that by playing around with this a little bit, just to give you an idea of what it should look like. All 
I'd say something like that. That's a nice fluid shape. It starts going up and then it goes down and then it comes back up to there. So that's a, that's a pretty good starting point right there. So once that's done, we can go to path, stroke the path. And we can come over to the arrow and click on that. We could turn that red actually for now. We'll turn that red and then drop the opacity in half. And then we can right click this and go to duplicate. And we'll take this second duplicated copy and we'll slide this off over here. So it's positioned right about there. You want these two lines to be intersecting and you want these two lines to be intersecting because we're gonna use this negative space between the two lines. We're gonna use that shape. We're gonna turn that into a shape and we're gonna use that. So once you, once you have a position like this, you can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. And you can click over, click and drag over both of the lines to select them both. And then we can go to Path, Union, and then we can go to Path, Break Apart. And then you can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And just take this piece in the middle right here and just drag that out. And then click on this, and let's press Delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. We don't need that. And then with this object right here, you could actually click this a second time to bring up the rotation handles. And we're just going to rotate this around so it's upright, kind of like that. And then while holding shift in the keyboard, click on the uh, click on our letters right here. And let's center that up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Then we can click on just this red shape. And while holding control and shift in the keyboard, we can click and drag one of these arrows to bring this out. We're going to bring this out to about here. Now that's a little too thick for my liking, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to grab this bottom arrow right here, and I'm going to I'm going to bring that up so it's about that size. I think that's a good thickness. You don't want it too much thicker than the letters. You don't want it just as thin as the letters. You want it to be a little thicker, but on the, at the same time you don't want it to be too thick like that, like it previously was. So I'm going to do something like that. I'm going to hold Shift in the keyboard and click on the letters and center that up again. Center it on the horizontal axis. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And what we can do now is we can click on just this red shape. We can right click it and go to duplicate. And then while holding shift in the keyboard, let's click on the letters and let's go to path difference. And then we can go to path break apart. So it's going to break this up into tiny little pieces. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now while holding shift in the keyboard, let's go and click on all of these little objects north of this red object. We want to click on these three right here and go to Path Union to combine them into one object. And then we'll go on the bottom, we'll click on each one of these. After you've done that, you could actually click off of the graphic to deselect that shape and then click on this and hold Shift and click on these over here to select all of them. And then we can go to Path Union and let's click on this red shape right here. Let's right click this and go to duplicate. And while holding control on the keyboard, press zero. So you're gonna hold control and press zero. And it's gonna make it a little bigger. And we're actually gonna do that a few more times. So this will be the second time, third time, four, five, six, seven, uh, eight. So about seven or eight times. We wanna get it to about that size. And then hold shift in the keyboard and click on this top this top level of uh, objects right here. And let's go to Path Difference. And we're gonna end up with something like that. And then we can take this red shape and we're gonna duplicate that again. And we're gonna turn that blue. And while holding Control on the keyboard, we're gonna press nine to make it smaller. So we're gonna press Control and nine, and that's gonna make it a little smaller. And I'm actually gonna do that a few more times. So this will be two, three, four, five, yeah, I'd say about four or five times. You want to make it about that much smaller. And then you can click off of it to deselect everything. And let's click on just this red shape. And let's hold shift and click on these bottom level of letters right here. And let's go to path, union. And then hold shift and click on this blue object and go to path, difference. And then we can come over here and bring the opacity all the way back over to the right to turn that all the way up. And I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick a, um, for this particular logo, I'm going to pick a shade of blue, maybe something like that. 
and then I'll take this top one right here. I'm going to bring the opacity all the way up, and I'm going to choose a shade of dark gray, maybe 80%, or something like that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some text to go beneath this. I'm going to come over to the text tool and click on that, and click on the canvas to bring up the cursor. And I'm going to turn on the caps lock, and I'm just going to write abbreviated logo example. And I'm actually going to make that bold and come back over to the arrow up here and click on that. And I'm going to go to, I'm going to make this the same color that the top of those letters are, which is 80% gray. And I'm going to bring this over here, right to the, right to where this letter A starts, right up to about there, maybe a little lower than it. And I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and scale this down about that much. And I'm actually going to bring this down a little bit. And then go back to the, um, create and edit text objects button, click on that. And up here, you're gonna see two letter A's next to each other. This is the spacing between the letters. I'm gonna press this up arrow just to increase the spacing between those, uh, those letters so we can have this sprawled out nicely beneath the, um, beneath the logo. So once that's done, you can click on the arrow, you can click and drag over the entire thing and group it together. And there you have it. It's a very, very simple, I know, it's, it's, it's very simple, but it's, uh, I think it's a nice looking concept that could be applied to a lot of different um, ideas, different logos you may want to create. So if you have any questions, let me know, and thank you for watching.